Welcome to the Metal Prognosis, my name is Lee. And on today's video, we're gonna focus in on bass and give the bass guitar a little bit of love. Uh, and when I normally do my bass and run through it, the first thing I reach out for is uh, my neural uh, VST plugin, my virtual instrument, the Dark Glass, because that just gets a, a beautiful amount of bite and grit to it, which I love. But for this video, uh, I've got my hands on this little potential beast, which uh, looks very similar to the Dark Glass, but this is a Microtube DK7 Ultra by Demon FX. Um, so, I'm gonna plug this in and see how it sounds and see what type of um, grit and grind we can actually get out of the bass running through here. Now what I thought would be a cool idea too for the jam is there's a direct out here as well. So we can capture the one performance, one, let's call it wet, as in all the affected uh, signal going through here, and an identical one of dry. So then we can hear uh, the jam in a full band mix with this mixed in, and one with actual the neural um, interface engaged as well with the dry signal. And this isn't a com not a comparison to see which one's better, but I'm just curious to see how this holds up by itself compared to my go-to to see how it sounds and just to see, well, it's gonna be fun having the conversation and putting it together. So let's continue the fun. Uh, let me quickly take a step away from the camera, reset everything up, plug everything in, and then we can see how this all sounds. Now I've got everything plugged in, ready to go. Let's grab the bass. Uh, I'll do my best not to upset any other bass players out there because this isn't my first instrument. Um, but yeah, hopefully I don't offend you. And if I do, let me know in the comments if you don't approve of how I play bass. So let's get that recording and... And we have two signals coming through. Excellent, so we've got our wet one there and a dry one. But at the moment they're both pretty dry. So let's turn this on, actually before we turn it on, let's just uh, get the EQ all up. Get the master up, blend. So the blend we might want close to full. Level, drive. I don't know if you can actually see it on the camera if I've pointed out enough uh, to see the different settings, but. They're sounding all right already. a bit more drive. So getting a little bit of buzz, but that's I mean, we're pushing it pretty hard, so that's fair. But that's actually a really decent sound. My pop slap is very sloppy at the moment. I'm out of practice. Uh, but that is, yeah, that's a pretty gnarly sound just straight off that. Um, I'm very impressed. So. I actually can't see what some of these things say here. Ah, so I've got the different grunt focus that we've got. So that's flat line. So let's muck around with that first, just to start somewhere.
that's not too bad. Let's try, all right, so we've got different attacks as well. different bass frequencies there to home in on. Really hard for me to tell in the room how much effect that's having. Hopefully you can hear it I'm pointing at the screen. Hopefully you can hear it and you're hearing it uh, now because uh, I think my subwoofer on that is just clouding a little bit too much for me to um, grasp the minute detail of what that does. So let's give it a quick EQ. Cut off a bit of the low end. I want that bass back in. I'm super impressed by this so far. Like that is sounding really cool, but as, you, as you've seen, by not doing much at all. As I said before, still a little bit of noise coming through, but it's very minute compared to uh, the actual grunt and sound we've got coming out of it. Um, it definitely would be worth investing in something like um, the noise killer, which I've had on there, or some other noise suppressor to put on the end before it hit the amp, because otherwise, um, yeah, it would be pretty hissy playing live. Uh, but I'm really liking that, so. Let's record the jam. So I'll quickly turn off all these cameras, set it all up uh, with uh, a couple of guitars going left and right and some drums and put the bass directly down the center. And then I'll record it once and we'll play it twice. Once with these settings that we've got here with uh, the demon effects and then another one with a dry signal we've got coming out uh, the left of that pedal, capturing it dry with um, the Dark Glass VST plugin. So sit back, relax, enjoy the song, and I'll see everyone on the other side. We can have another quick chat about it uh, to finish off the video.
All right, so that's what it sounds like in the mix with it turned on. But I just realized after doing it uh, pretty much straight away listening back that the direct out doesn't work on how I thought it would work. For some reason, I thought I was gonna get a dry signal out of it. I just had that little brain fart of a moment and thought that I don't know why it happened. It happens, and but we are still moving ahead. I'm gonna do that jam again, but this time I've got this plugged directly into my desk, 100% bypassing uh, the pedal now <laughs> to make sure there is nothing coming out of there. So at least we can do what I uh, set out to do at the start of the video is to give a back to back, not comparison, but just listening to. Uh, so enjoy now my second take of this, which I didn't think I was gonna need to do, with just the VST, uh, which I've got here, the VST uh, Dark Glass by uh, Neural DSP. Okay. Time for some final thoughts on uh, the Dark Glass clone here uh, by Demon Effects. So, firstly, uh, my mistake. Let's get that out of the way straight away. So, for some reason, I thought this direct output was going to give us a direct signal being nice and dry, like it was a bypass, uh, like a lot of pedals do, like through. I don't know why, for some reason, I just thought it was a through and a bypass instead of it going direct out, which is better for recording. But not for the purpose that I was hoping for for this video. Not my finest moment, but we're here and we survived. It just took me an extra take to do it. So not the end of the world, just a little bit embarrassing. But let's focus on the positive stuff and the things uh, that went right, which is uh, my first thoughts on this plugging it in. Uh, so yeah, the lights were super bright, which if you're using this live, really handy, really good. Uh, but it took us very, very little to actually get a decent sound out of it. And the amount of grunt uh, and dirt you can get out of this, I was super, super surprised. Super impressed by it. Um, the, the amount of hiss that we got from it, do not care at all. I would happily put uh, a noise reducer or some sort of um, uh, noise killer or a controller at the tail end of this chain to keep that grunt there because this grunt is amazing for especially for the price uh, they paid for these because these clones are definitely on the cheaper side um, and everything everything worked out really well uh, I mean I didn't really go too much into the EQs on this to really see the extreme on and offs because they kind of just really worked and, and sat nicely um, I couldn't hear much of the different attack uh, notions that this has to offer. And I think I said it before, I think I was just getting clouded by too much, um, too much noise in the room to me to really focus in on home in on and that um, 
which is fine, uh, it's no problem at all. So hopefully it comes through in the recording a little bit more detailed so you can actually hear it and um, come up with your own opinion of it. But this has the exact layout of the um, dark glass, exact. So when I saw it going through, because I use a dark glass so much, I knew it back to front uh, already and it pretty much reacted. I don't know about identically because I'm dealing with digital um, pretending to turn knobs, so to speak, compared to actually physically doing them. So they're, they're going to have different responses and kind of uh, a slightly different touch to it. But going from looking at it and just being able to go, yep, I know what's going on. And this comes from, um, I think, highlighted more towards my analog background because I grew up, uh, no, I didn't grow up. I definitely grew up, but my sound engine, what I really want to focus in, when I started doing sound engineering, I was doing reel to reel, not digital. And I learned later on and molded myself into the digital world. So this has kind of worked in a really nice re reverse bizarre way because that emulated the analog aspect of it that I learned. So then when I actually got my hands on an analog, it's a clone, but still an analog piece of equipment, I knew it <laughs> straight away. Uh, I knew how to navigate around it. Um, so yeah, that was just nice. So, um, super, super impressed by it. Really, really good. Um, and I'm kind of a little bit lost for words on how to describe it even more and how much I really enjoyed it and how much oomph we got from it. And especially as you saw, from doing very, very little uh, to get that sound as well. Um, now this compared to the um, Neural DSP version, I felt like the Neural DSP was definitely more, and I didn't go too in depth with that one either. Uh, I pretty much put the default, default settings up and just pushed the drive a little bit because the default settings I had on there weren't as uh, grindy as compared to how we did this. So I just turned the drive up a bit. Um, I felt that that was a lot more controlled and a lot more rounded off. So for studio work, uh, a lot more user friendly. But this gave a lot more aggression in, in uh, how we pushed it and did it. Now, not to say that the neural DSP cannot, uh, I just didn't delve into it that much to really give it um, the appropriate, um, I don't really want to say chance or possibility it has, but I didn't invest as much time as what I did into this and that wasn't the purpose of it. I was just keen to put them back to back just to see the difference. Um, but yeah, definitely a difference in quality, which you'll expect because that's 100% in the computer and controlled sound where this is a, um, you kind of could call it a foreign uh, signal coming from an analog um, <laughs> into the mixing console. Uh, not a bad thing, neither is better or worse. Uh, they're just very different and depending on how you'd want to approach it would be um, how you want to do it. So. Uh, just before I close up with it, I will elaborate just a little bit more on uh, the dark glass plug-in that I got. And, it, and I'll elaborate with a, a quick story on how I got into it. So, my band recorded an album, we tracked all the bass uh, dry, and then I added in stuff afterwards to try spruce it up if it needed a bit of uh, chorus or flange or something like that, I added that um, in digitally afterwards. And we're, we recorded all the guitars uh, wet, none of it was dry, um, and the album was done. It was mixed, it was all put together, all done. Then I updated my studio, which is what I've got running now. And one of the things I really wanted to do with the new studio was focus more on BST, virtual instruments, and working purely from the box. So I got my hands on something I was eyeing off for a long, long time, which is a Neural DSP uh, NTS. Uh, the Fortin guitar uh, amp simulator. And I decided to get the dark glass one for bass because I was never really happy with the bass and enough grunt that I was getting out of it from what I was using uh, beforehand in what I call the old studio compared to the new one. And when I got that, I was working on a song with the bass player at the time uh, while composing. And I just put that filter on there while I was sending him uh, some files backwards and forwards. And he heard that and went, holy crap, that bass is huge. Can we put that on the album? The album's done, it's mixed. It's, it's complete. Our city was in lockdown 
and I thought, why not? There is no reason and no real rhyme or reason of why I can't actually do that. So I re-brought the album back into the new studio, which in itself took a long time, <laughs> but I did it because uh, it ended up being, I think, 11 songs all up. So there was a lot of files, a lot of stuff to go through. And I decided to remix it all, take a couple of months to remix it, to add in the dark glass to the bass and then blend everything. So I had to redo the drums to blend in with it all. Um, the album didn't focus 100% on the bass, but to re really utilize uh, what I felt to be the amazing effect that we got out of the bass by running it through uh, the dark glass compared to doing it dry with a couple of little tube filters after it to make it feel more um, larger and more acoustic uh, sounding. Um, and yeah, that took a good couple of months, but we were wrapped with the results and I absolutely don't uh, regret making that decision. So when I saw this one for as cheap as what I did, I got super excited because I was like, I wonder. I wonder how, not so much how close it can get, but can I get the same thrill and the same uh, impressiveness of just plugging it in, hearing it and going, wow, that's taken bass from here to all the way up here. And the answer in today's video and my bl blabbering and my stuttering should give you a prime example that that answer is a thriving yes. Yes, it did. So, thank you Demon Effects for cloning this and making it affordable for me to pay for and get because the uh, dark glass one is a little bit out of my price range. So, now the most important thing, what are your thoughts? How did you feel rolls running through and all that? Did you have a laugh? Did you scream at me going, that's not what direct ad is, that's not a through lead, what the hell are you doing? Um, because I know during editing, I'm gonna be screaming at myself. <laughs> Making such a, a, a rookie mistake. Not really rookie, but yeah, just having a moment. Um, yeah, and what are your thoughts about uh, this pedal? And have you used the Neural DSP one or other ones? Uh, my friend, uh, Nick, who's also got a YouTube channel that I uh, talk to a lot, he recommended me onto another one by Audio Assault, so I'm definitely keen to give that VST a uh, try as well soon. So, thank you very much for being a part of this conversation. This is a fun video to put together. Um, and definitely look forward to chatting with you again next time. So, my usual sign off. Whether this video is in the foreground or the background, I thoroughly enjoy having this conversation with you and joining me in on these type of little adventures that I do, plugging stuff in, trying it, and getting more excited than being disappointed, which is always good. And I really look forward to chatting with you next time. And until next time, please, stay safe. <laughs>